Hey everybody, it's Rob from Playthroughs. This is Gun Battle Operation, and this is one of the situation battles from this last week, and as far as I can tell, the theme is confusion. I'm in the Jim Night Seeker, I want to say. It's either the Night Seeker or the Night Seeker 2. One of those is a general, one is a melee, I forget which is which. But it's pretty basic. It has the, you know, pretty standard Federation moveset. It's got a, uh... It's got a Hyper Bazooka, in this case it's got a Beam Saber with two swings, a uh, dodge roll, the usual. It also has grenades, which is kind of growing my weapon, weapon cycling, but what the reason this is a confusion-based round is that each team has mobile suits with stealth, and each team has mobile suits with radar confusion, uh, camouflage, I think it's called. I'm not sure what the exact term is, but enemies will show up as friendlies on your radar until they attack. So that's a thing. Switch to Vulcans on purpose there so I could uh, hit that pixie without stunning whoever's in the uh, Juag. Oh, that's that troll. Yeah, that is, uh, Juag is the, uh, or it's the Agu guy, I get them confused, but I think that's the Juag. Uh, it, it's the new one, which is a basically Agai upgrade. It's got stealth, It's uh, and it's got its main weapon is still Vulcans, but its Vulcans uh, stagger the way that Zaku J-type missiles stagger. Uh, I was talking about that the last video, I probably called it whichever one I'm not calling it now. I don't remember. But yeah, it's it's an interesting mobile suit, and I was trying to wobble the game, but switch to Vulcans because Vulcans. Somebody got that. It wasn't me. Pert pilot was gotten, and so I show up and uh, back uh, back up our uh, random. Ah, I thought I'd go after the pixie too. Whichever. Uh, Jim Night Seeker I have, and if I'd hit the Pixie, I'd probably have killed it, but I did not make my shot. That's Azura's cry in the Pixie, so yeah, he, uh, he kicked me out pretty quick. Uh, the, uh, if I'd hit the Pixie, I probably uh, would have uh, would have killed it, but yeah, whichever Night Seeker this is, it's the one, it, like I said, it's the one with the camouflage feature, it is not the one with anti-stealth because uh, I would have been able to pick out the uh, pixie much more easily. So yeah, it was an, it was an interesting uh, it's an interesting setup. I kind of want to play it again before uh, before it's cycled out. Because yeah, just all if you spend a lot of time looking at your radar, and I do, and I shouldn't, this match will just confuse the heck out of you. At some point. At, at some point, you just need to stop paying attention to radar. I mean, uh, technically, in Gundam, there's a lot of times when they didn't even have radar because these, that is one of the side effects of uh, Minovsky particles. They confound radar and other uh, other uh, electronics sometimes. But mostly radar, but I want to say there's something else you can be with. Possibly radio. Yeah, that's why the, that's why a lot of the uh, uh, radio transmissions in Gundam games you've played have probably been uh, distorted and staticky because the Minovsky particles are supposed to be interfering. I used to know exactly what all they did, but that was a long time ago. But there's there's some really good write-ups of uh, Minovsky physics out there. Uh, a writer by the name of Mark Simmons, writer and artist, in fact, uh, he used to be like the go-to translator for Gundam stuff. He, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure he still consults with uh, Bandai and Sunrise on some of uh, their Gundam so productions. Okay. But he was the lead translator on the original his so release of Gundam: The Origin, and he was pretty much he was one of the like main consultants on the uh, for the U.S. release of the original Gundam series back in 2001. Also, just you know, a tremendously nice human being. Uh, his his fan site Gundam Project was where I first got into the Gundam fandom, and yeah, really nice guy. Uh, like I said, also a comic artist. He, uh, you'll you know he's around, and he 
has put a lot more thought. Now, he's translated a lot of the uh, fan info about uh, gun physics and history that from, you know, various important and possibly now outdated books like Gundam Century and things like that. But yeah, a lot of the a lot of the like nitty gritty Gundam science stuff that is in English is in English because he uh, translated chunks of it on various message boards over the years. So, yeah. So there a lot of the information is out there thankfully. Um I think I've said this before but you know, don't necessarily trust the uh, Gundam Wiki. There, I've seen a lot of inaccuracies on there, and it's just Gundam is large and confusing, and I kind of think it takes a, a, a less wiki approach to get that right. It, it needs a certain wikis. The Transformers Wiki is really good for this. Have have a like dedicated editorial staff that work on standardizing things and making sure things are correct. And I think that's kind of necessary to for, for a positive and functional wiki experience. I'm not sure the Gundam Wiki has that. If they do, and you're on that staff, I apologize. I've you know I've run into some stuff that I've been pretty sure wasn't right in the past. So that's just you know maybe that's on me. But yeah, uh, MAHQ has been around forever. That they, they you know that they, they have. Again, consulted with people like Mark Simmons to make sure that their stuff is as accurate as possible. So if you're looking for a mobile suit profile, check MAHQ first. They, they're, they're really, really uh, good. Man, I remember way back when the Gundam fan site I was a moderator on, we had a kind of like rivalry thing going with MAHQ. Ah, pointless internet rivalries. Man. That, that takes me back not necessarily in a good way. But, yes, I, I'm rambling again because there's just not, just not too much for me to say about this match except it was it was very, very confusing and weird because, you know, I don't think there's a single... There, there may be, like, a couple of mobile suits in here that had the option of appearing, like, normally on radar. The, the one of free, I think, technically can because if it's not using its smoke... It's not stealth, but otherwise, yeah. Apologies, did not mean to uh, knock everybody down. I'm trying to get the kill shot in on that pixie along with everyone else. But yeah, I think that's I think that's the the Afrit knock, and I think it can stealth because it has a smoke dispenser, but I don't think it's uh, necessarily going to do. And the match is over. And I think we won. Was, again, weird match. Neat setup. Want to try it again. There's a couple other interesting setups this uh, week that I haven't really spent a lot of time with. So maybe I'll have to try and get a couple more rounds in before it's all said and done. Yeah, we won that one. And yeah, it was, it's a kind of a neat setup. And I did very poorly. But such is life. Kind of a, as you can see, Seraphic Zero did a lot better with that uh, with that uh, Night Seeker than I did. So it can be done, just not by me, not that night. And of course, Gundam Battle Operation only lasts until the end of this month. As of this recording, there are 22 days left to play. So if you've already downloaded it, you know, get. Ah, get to play, and if you want, if there's any mobile suits you want to try, they're all available for points right now. So that is gonna do it for today's gun and battle operation. We will be back soon with more. Until next time, everybody take care and have fun. Later.